Hello and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto, where I like to teach people about crypto. And this is going to be my second video on Forfi Synthetics, my first video here. And this is where we covered some of the basic concepts around synthetics. Things like how they work, minting, redeeming, and then uh, swapping synthetics, like um, BDC, synthetic BDC through to um, Ethereum BDC. And in this video, we're gonna continue on with that where we talk more um, about like synthetics in use. And this is gonna be loosely um, based on this thread here from ThorChain. And I say loosely, because if you're scratching your head at the numbers, uh, you weren't the only one. So they weren't 100% accurate. Uh, I have got a spreadsheet here that goes through and crunches all of the numbers. So um, that way we can apply them to the graphics that I have um, created here just zoom out a bit and that way we can go through this and when i go through this I just talk about the effects that synthetics are having in you know in every particular case and that way we can discover and learn going through specific examples more about synthetics so if you're new here don't forget to like and subscribe and support the channel uh, so you can see more videos like this where i break down the detail <music> Started. Um, I tried to cut out my previous video. So a reminder about swap fees. When I swap, say, Rune to BDC, I'm adding Rune. So you know, this is the pool when I start, and then I'm adding Rune, and then I'm taking away BDC. So that's not a one-to-one. -one. If I were to add 10 Rune, I'm not going to get 10 Rune worth of BDC out. There's going to be a um, there's going to be a slip payable. So it's essentially a fee taken in the swap. So in the examples I've created that the fees there, this is the actual formula here, you can find on the docs and there's, here's an example. So um, whilst I'm using very simplistic examples, I've got all of the numbers here. So there's a bit to cover. Um, let's get started and get into these examples. So we're gonna start with a normal swap. So that way we can compare it from um, when we're gonna do like minting an asset. So here we're swapping um, one asset to another. We're swapping Rune to this asset. This asset could be anything um, within ThorChain, Ethereum, Bitcoin, doesn't really matter. Our start is always gonna be a thousand on each side. These are very simplistic numbers for, for easy accounting. Um, and that gives a pool depth of 2000 there. So we add 10 Rune in, 9.8 asset out. And then that, that changes the balance of the pool. In the spreadsheet, we did the same thing. That's the actual um, formula for the swap uh, here. Um, we started off with a thousand each, we put in 10, we get 9.8 out. Obviously this is rounded to two decimal points and full chain goes to um, eight, but we essentially end up with um, 9.8 out. So then when it pulls out of balance, which we've talked about before, then it's gonna be rebalanced by ARBs. So there'll be an arbitration um, opportunity that they'll take advantage of because the pool price would be different compared to the market price. An ARB would, which is essentially a swap, an ARB or an arbitration is a swap, it's just a fancy name for it. An ARB would add about 9.9 .9 asset and then take out 9.9 .9 room. Uh, if that's a bit too detailed for you, don't, don't worry about it. Just know that the, um, the pool will be put back into balance um, by putting 9.9 .9 in and you get about 9.9 .9 out. That brings the pool balance back to 1,000.1 uh, .1 on either side. So that 0.1 is the fee collected in the swap. So when we, we talked about um, it's not one-to-one, -one, there's a slip fee uh, collected, that is the fee. So the overall depth does increase. And if you would see my previous videos, you would know here it swaps generate fees, they become a part of the system income. And then there, there's a split of the system income. This is the incentive pendulum. Um, and that system income goes to nodes and liquidity providers. And that's how liquidity providers get paid. So that's a simple swap uh, that we've got there and the following ARB to bring it back into balance. So now we understand a simple L1 swap, which is standard asset swap. Let's go have a look at a mint to see how that's different. So we start with the, the pool balance at the same um, and the same input of 10 rune. So we put that in and we're gonna get 9.9 .9 synth out. And the pool depths afterwards are gonna be a little bit different. When we move over to the ARB, 
um, because the pool balance is a little bit different, there's going to be less arc required here. Um, and then we're going to have our end pool balance with our um, accounting for our outstanding sins. So there's a lot of subtleties, a lot of things going on here um, during the mint process when you can compare it to the normal swap. So let's go through that now. The output of the synthetic is actually going to be higher than the actual normal swap. So why is that? Since I designed to have a, like a 50% discount on the slip fee, and it achieves this by doubling the depth of the pool virtually um, during the swap. I'm just gonna go through this detail now. In constants, there's this constant here called virtual multiplier for synths. And this is um, the pool depth multiplier for synthetic swaps. So you can search for it um, inside the search and then you'll find the actual code, but I found that for you already. What 4chain will do is get the balance of the pool. So if we say this is the, the rune balance, which is a thousand here, and the asset balance, which is a thousand there. It's going to times that by the multiplier, which is the, the synth virtual depth multiplier. So essentially it's times in the depth by two on both sides, then it's going to calculate the swap. So by doubling the depth of the pool, you're essentially halving the swap fee because the deeper the pools, the less the swap fee is for the same amount of um, asset you're swapping. So next, the asset side of the pool doesn't change. So we notice here, we, have, we started with a thousand. After we mint, we still have a thousand the asset compared to um, the normal swap. So what that means is that in a normal swap, the assets leave, so therefore three times the value of Rune is no longer required in the network. Think about the incentive pendulum, or see my video on that. Whereas here, the assets are kept, so therefore that requirement for Rune um, is also remains. And then because the um, synth collateral is armed, it's gonna attract even more assets into the, uh, the network here, thus holding three times the value of that additional asset, that five asset uh, requirement for room, because you're gonna have one in the pool um, and then two in the nodes for every one asset you have um, inside of the pool here. So this not only um, holds value inside of the network or inside of the pool, it drives depth inside of the pool when a synth is minted. Then the ARB you would notice is reduced because the pool's taken less out of balance. So this actually um, produces less income under this scenario for the liquidity providers than normal. However, I always like saw before that was a bad thing, seeing that this process would produce less income for liquidity providers. But then I sort of thought that synthetics or the, the, the consequences of synthetics here would be over above it's not going to replace normal l1 swaps because like in a way it's creating more than what normally would be there without synthetics because you're not going to be having this additional arbitration process in the minting and there's also one in the redeeming um without synthetics you'd just be having the normal l1 swaps so whilst it looks kind of not the best for liquidity providers on the surface, when you think about it, this is producing a, a revenue stream for the pool that otherwise wouldn't be there. So just have a look what that means. So this is what we started here with the normal swap and this is the end state. Then when we look at the um, actual pool units difference here, we've got a thousand here and here we've increased the pool units to um, about a thousand five because of the minting of the synthetic um, talking about the slip, I just want to talk about incentives. So this is the, um, the synthetic depth multiplier that I talked about. And that's where we essentially doubling the depth of big X and big Y with X here to um, give a 50% discount on the slip. So things like this is a way that I think ThorChain incentivizes the use of um, synthetics. Also, I just wanted to do point out there's a way to um, calculate the, the collateral or the rune collateral of the synthetic, because this here is the synth units, which is essentially the rune side for the collateral. And that can be found inside of the spec um, here. So this gives you the rune collateral for the synthetic. And when I ran that um, to kind of understand it a bit better, it, no matter what you put in, as long as the, um, 
the, the depth side of I can put 50, 50 here, it's still going to work out the same, the actual um, rune value of synthetics. So what that means is once this is calculated, it doesn't matter the actual depth of the pool, uh, the synthetic amount or the rune collateral for the synthetic is always going to be the same. We're going to talk more about that in the third video of this series where we um, just going to go in a lot more detail about why that is and how that works. So that was a lot of detail there. If you don't get all that, that's that's fine. We'll, we'll probably get there in the third video. Um, I just hope to get the, the impacts out of minting with regards to the pool depth doesn't increase. The, um, the slip is reduced um, compared to a normal L1 swap. But then again, we're, we're adding something on and above what's previously not there. So, you know, it's like a net benefit, I would say. Moving on to um, swapping. So this is, this is we're swapping 10.1 of asset through to a synthetic. And this is essentially the exact same thing as combining one and two, except, um, like if I can draw it, we're, we're taking that and we're sticking that at the front. Um, like doing a normal L1 swap then a mint. And this is kind of like a common use case that people would do. They'll go from an asset straight to a synth. So I've seen this in the chat, you know, I'm gonna go from, you know, normal L1 um, Bitcoin through to synthetic Bitcoin. And you know, how does that work? So this is an example where we have put 10.1 in. I chose 10.1 because that was in the Twitter thread. And then we do the swap, we get 9.9 .9 out. Um, and then we take that um, room to use as collateral inside the minting process and we get 10 cents an hour. Like, so note here, the two processes happen so quickly that there's no opportunity for ARB to happen in between. They're kind of like, they're literally kind of done instantly or atomically uh, within the same transaction. So that's why there's no arbitration between them. Once the minting is finished, then the pool is going to get ARB like normal. And there wouldn't be much ARB here because of the way that the, the pool has been moved in and out of balance there. You will notice here that like 9.9 .9 of room goes in and 10 cent goes out. So it's like, well, why is that? I did run the numbers like three or four times on different spreadsheets. I can't say 100% know why that's the case, but I suspect it's because this swap here, because minting's kind of like a swap, um, favors the pool with regards to like thinking about liquidity pool. So therefore, you get quite a favorable output for the room collateral. Next, we're gonna talk about the synth vault. And the synth vault is where we're gonna take our 10 synth that we've minted here in, in this particular um, example. And then we're going to uh, put that in the synth vault and it's gonna increase by two. So we've got an interest, we've earned two synthetics off um, or from the vault uh, over a certain period of time. And look at the numbers here. Uh, kind of just plucks some numbers. It's 20% return over six months um, to produce, you know, take out 10 and put it to two. And when doing that, you've got to understand what liquidity pool gains uh, are going to be also. So uh, kind of like just double that. Um, I'll explain why in the next video. Um, but then these are some approximate numbers. Don't really take them um, as gospel or as what you would expect to see when synthetics are launched. They're just some numbers kind of plucked because literally it's that top number times two. So that works out the, the liquidity pool gains because you would need to work that in concept with the synthetic gains. So you can't really just have one without the other. So looking at um, the pool gains, we've essentially taken these pool gains here, applied them to the pool depth, because that's, you know, take that divide two, in order to properly account for the increases of both this, the synth um, as well as the liquidity pools. So that is depicted uh, here. Um, when we have our starting values and we uh, counter for our outstanding synthetic here. So once we've got the output of our vault, then we go ahead, put that into um, uh, be redeemed. That produces 12 rune because that's also enjoying the 50% um, discount on slip. And then we look at uh, taking that to a normal swap. So 12 rune in and then we get 11.9 asset out. And that is how you change from a synth to an asset. So you can see here, now we started with 10.1 and now we've got 11.9. So we've actually got a bit of interest um, on the asset itself. Obviously this doesn't uh, include um, transaction or exit transaction fees. 
but see my video on wait times and fees for more information on that. Just some points I need to, to cover off here on redemption. Um, also, like the asset side of the pool doesn't change, um, like, like with the minting as well. So that doesn't bring the pool out of balance as much compared to a, uh, like a normal L1 swap. It reduces the depth of the pool overall. Like if we look at the start, then um, at what's that 1407, and then we look at the end state here after arving, it's obviously gonna be reduced. So whilst minting increases and drives depth into the pool, um, redemption exactly has the opposite effect. Lastly, uh, the example I wanted to show was uh, the synthetic swaps. And that is essentially moving a um, synthetic Bitcoin to um, synthetic Ethereum. And uh, this is really the notation you should be used, not like SBDC or S Ethereum, as I've been told. Really, it's a redemption, then a mint is what a synthetic swap's gonna be. Take your 10 synth in to produce 9.9 .9 room out. You take that um, through as collateral to mint 9.8 um, synth. These both would enjoy the um, the reduced or the 50% slip discount as opposed to an L1 swap. And again, I mean, this is just all part of incentivizing the utilization of synthetics. So there would be some arving after the, the minting and the redemption. Um, I've got that here. So these are both be L1 swaps for the arving, but I didn't put it on the pictures um, just because I really couldn't be bothered and it wouldn't really look right. So that is, that's it for the video. That's, um, well, the, the main examples, we have a normal L1 swap, which um, happens today. Then we have the minting, and the minting essentially drives, um, well, the minting holds liquidity in the pool and then drives depth inside of the pool compared to like a normal swap. But then again, this, because since would be in addition to this normal stuff, it's not like it's gonna replace it. Um, it's a bit of a net positive there. This is what it would look like to, to um, specifically swap an asset through to a synthetic, and then we can put that synthetic in the vault, earn some interest, um, understanding that liquidity pool would grow at the same time um, outside of the synth interest. Then we take that uh, synthetic and redeem that back to an asset, and this is how you do a particular swap of synthetics. So that's essentially, I guess, going over these parts um, in, a, in a bit more depth um, using specific numbers, using the spreadsheet, and then working out the synth units um, at each part, as well as um, the, the depth values and the depth changes to ensure that we've got all the right numbers. So I hope you find that useful. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna be talking really what's on the right-hand side of the picture. And I think, cause I've had a lot of questions on this, um, when people were talking about like the loss and the gains and how all that works. Um, I can't really explain it in this video, although I've given a few clues, I think. With these graphics, it doesn't really depict it. So I have created a whole set of new graphics that we'll go through in the next video to give you a better understanding of really what's happening behind the scenes um, and how all that works and what effects that has. So tell me what you think. Um, please put your comments below. Has that helped you understand synthetics? Uh, has that raised more questions? Is it perhaps part three is where you're gonna get your answers from? And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content like this and to see the third video in the series. Thanks for watching and until next time.